is the S number and this is the P number, right? So S comma P. So I immigrated from Iran five years ago. I always wanted to immigrate because in my country, there isn't enough room for a woman to grow as an individual, to study and to do research. So usually when you do a clinical trial, you have randomized. In one of our classes, uh, our professors start talking about ERSP program and told us that is a great research opportunity. So that's why most of the drug cannot pass the clinical trials. ERSP is a team-based, scaffolded research experience for early undergraduates in computer science. The idea was to find some faculty mentors who are willing to let groups of undergraduates into their lab who would be supported not only by them, but also through this central structured mentoring team to help give these early undergraduates a little more support that they needed as they were getting involved in research. So if I do X4, what's gonna happen? My project deals with making a game out of a very complicated computational problem called software verification. Our professors and our advisors built this game on Facebook and it was not very accessible because you had to have a Facebook account to play it. And it was built for a computer and so what my team and I did was that we first built it on a mobile phone and the second thing that we added was to introduce a multiplayer mode on it and so you can basically challenge your friends to play the game with you. We'll just do the comparative study single player versus multiplayer. Software verification is basically trying to make sure that the softwares that are being produced are bulletproof. Everything that you do is kind of guided by software so if you're driving a car and you're in an accident the airbag should pop out. Now that is something that's been coded into the car to do. And so we need to make sure that it works perfectly fine. And if it doesn't, either it's going to pop out even when it doesn't need to, or it won't pop out when it does need to. You have smaller things that's like pedestrians. The project that I'm working on is building reinforcement learning environments in order to evaluate and benchmark reinforcement learning algorithms. So the agent is a car and basically the agent drives the car to try to reach a target while avoiding obstacles. So then for these lanes, would they be physical blocks? Our well? environment adds obstacles that the car has to avoid and normally in everyday life, you have a lot of these constraints. You have to drive while stopping at stop signs, while not crashing into other cars. And while a reinforcement learning algorithm today might be really good at just steering the car to get to a target, it's not so good at doing this while also abiding by the constraints. And people uh, have, in, have tried to investigate in the context of microbiome. Our research is more bioinformatic related, and it is one of the most interesting things that I think I could have done. What we are doing right now is that we are looking for fundamental rules of nature. We are working on microbiome. Microbiome is what lives within us on nature everywhere. There are a great amount of uh, microbiome data available to everyone. And up to now, people have been looking at these information in different ways, usually using really complex mathematical relationships. But what we are doing is that we're using those same data, but we're applying a very, very simple mathematical uh, rules to come up with clear hypothesis that can give us universal rules that would exist anywhere between two microbes. As of right now, we have found multiple really interesting relationships that are related to food poisoning and how it can be inhibited, hopefully. And we have the ability to take that into lab and confirm our hypothesis, which is something that do not exist usually in this field. Because this is a funded project. So in addition to the faculty mentor from the research team, they're mentored by a central mentoring team, including myself as the program director and a graduate student assistant. We provide more of the day-to-day, -day, hands on just standard mentoring that early research students need. I think it's very important for undergraduates to have an idea of how to do all the presentation and posters and stuff, and also all the technical details like code or the different mathematical formulas they need to know about. Because regardless of whether you go to the industry or you stay in academia, you will need to own a product end-to-end -end someday. It was important to me to target ERSP at students from underrepresented groups is that those students 
generally have less experience before college. And then on top of that, because they're in the minority, they might feel less comfortable approaching professors to try to get these research opportunities. So they're kind of doubly hindered in their ability to get involved in research. I would say that the biggest benefit is the amount of confidence that it gave me in my own skills and the way I present myself to other people. And so before I was a part of this program, it felt like I was a part of this huge university and I was just a student here and I didn't know where I stood. But after being a part of the program, I realized how important it is to challenge yourself and I realized that the things that I was doing even if it was just writing a piece of code that somebody has already written how it's benefiting me and my understanding. ARSP has been expanded to three other universities. One university has already implemented a year of ERSP, so that's UC Santa Barbara. And they said they've been really surprised with how well the program works. You know, this idea of engaging sophomores in research is a little bit out there. People take a little bit to warm up to the idea that sophomores could really do something meaningful in a research project. And I, I think they've been pleasantly surprised by how much the students have been able to do and how well the structure of the program works. The initial funding for ERSP came from the NSF. That was our launch funding, our pilot funding. And since the program's been running now for five years, that funding is finished. I've been fortunate that the department has been supportive of kind of bridging the efforts and keeping it going. But what's going to be really important for the program's future is finding a way to financially support it as we move forward. I get it. That makes a lot of sense. I love it. That's great. The thing that I really like the most about being involved in this program is to see the students blossom. They spend a year doing research and they get to learn and they get to explore the ideas and at the end of it they come out uh, with confidence, with pride, and with excitement uh, about research. And I think that's really a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. When we started back in September, I had no idea that we would be presenting something like this today. I am a totally different person in terms of my knowledge, in terms of the things that I can do. I could not believe that we could accomplish this much within a year. I now have more hope to continue doing research in future. And it gave me the confidence to go on. It's been something that I always wanted to do, but I knew over there, my chances are pretty low, almost zero. So all these years, my family and I, we've been trying to find a way to come out and find the opportunity to grow. It's been hard, but it's worth it. And I think I've been reaching what I've been looking for all these years.